We discuss in this video several popular and powerful kernels in machine learning. Polynomial kernels, radial basis functions, sigmoidal functions, and we will get an intuition for the type of separation that they can help obtain. So here is we, we have this um, uh, data set uh, where we indicate in the same way as before, we have the red dots in, in one class of the data set and we have the blue courses in, in the other data set. And if we were to apply a standard support vector machine, it's very difficult how, and in fact, it's impossible to, to get a, uh, a clean, you know, error-free separation with a hyperplane, no matter where you would draw a line, there would always be some misclassified uh, data points. But on the other hand, I mean, you can see, just like it's shown in this figure, that a sort of a parabola separation between these, these classes works very well in this case. And so the whole idea here is how about if we somehow use the kernel trick so that we can apply it on top of support, support vector machines and we would get the separation uh, between the two classes with the same idea as before. We have a um, uh, parabola instead of a hyperplane and around this parabola there is, a, there is a thick margin as wide as we can possibly get it in such a way that the uh, one of the class uh, in, in our data set is on one side of the plane um, and the other class is on the other side of the hyperplane and no data points ideally if there was no error no data point would be in this uh, margin and so if we want to do it like that a parabola is of course a polynomial uh, model of degree two um, and you can also switch tables and think about this as being a linear model in terms of all the monomials of degree up to two computed over the set of features of our data points. And so if we think about it in that way, if we have a data point of the form xt, um, I'm just going to write all of its components. It's a uh, first component xt1 um, and it goes to xtd. Um, and we would like somehow to work with a um, linear model, um, but that linear model is going to be on uh, a linear in the following vector is going to be uh, this one where you have all the features you had, um, you know, before. Um, but you would also have access to all of these um, quadratic um, uh, features. So you would have access to um, x t1 squared and all the other components um, squared and you would also have access to all of these xti xtj um, for all i and j between 1 and d and so if you somehow have access to all of these components then of course i mean uh, we can do a support vector machine on top of these um, uh, quadratic components and, and that would give us this sort of a parabola. I just want to anticipate here a little bit and, and comment that these monomials may also be cal calculated for convenience with some so sort of a scalar in front of them if we need to, because in the support vector machine formulation, um, each of these term anyway is going to be multiplied with a coefficient that has to be learned by the model. And so having this scalar, it doesn't really matter because it's melting away in that free parameter that we have to estimate anyway. Rather than calculating all these extra features for all the data points, we are instead going to introduce a polynomial kernel of degree two. And the kernel we are going to use in this case is going to be k applied to two vectors x, y, both of them of, of uh, dimension d, is simply going to be 1 plus x transpose times y to the power 2. And I want to show you that this, in fact, is going to do the trick. So I'm going to work with this and, and show you its form. So k of x, y, uh, I'm just going to first show you the result of this dot product. So this is going to be 1 plus x1, y1 plus uh, x d y d uh, everything to power 2 and um, this is going to be uh, equal to when I raise to power 2 is going to be um, 1 plus 2 x 1 y 1 plus 2 x d y d plus x 1 squared y 1 squared plus x d squared 
y d squared. And this corresponds exactly um, to, uh, I'm going to write it here, it's going to correspond exactly to kxy being equal to phi of x transposed phi of y, where phi is defined in the following way. Phi of x is going to be defined as being um, 1, then we have square root of 2 times x1, then we have square root of 2 x2, and um, then we have x1 squared all the way xd squared. And we can see this because when we are taking this dot product between phi of x and phi of y, we are going to, to, to get it in, in the following way. In the following way, 1 times 1 is going to give us 1. Then we have square root of 2 times x1 times square, square root of 2 times y1 from phi of y. And that's going to give us this term, uh, where 2 is coming from multiplying uh, twice the square root of 2. And, and then we have square root of 2 times x um, uh, d should be here uh, times <clears throat> square root of 2 times y d and that gives us this term. Then we have x1 squared times y1 squared that gives us this term and, and so on. x d squared times y d squared gives us this term. So in this case, this particular kernel here is going to work just fine. And as a matter of fact, in general, if we need a higher degree polynomial, the idea is going to be exactly the same. So in general, these polynomial kernels are going to be of the form k of x, y is equal to 1 plus x um, transposed times y to the power q, where q is the suitable degree that we are looking for. And so I just want to comment just one more time that using this sort of a kernel is going to lead to a model that works over much more features in, than, than what, what we had in the original data set. We are going to have all the features of degree um, up to Q, but we are only using, in fact, um, these, these values. And that's, in fact, just a matrix of n by n values um, and being the number of data points in your original set. So um, we just have to calculate somehow or be given n by n values, but that's going to open up um, access to a huge number of extra features using this kernel trick. Um, here is um, another interesting situation where the data seems to be best separated uh, by some sort of an elliptic-like margin. So. Uh, we have this 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 situation in here. Here is another attempt, uh, an, another sort of um, uh, separation. Here is another one. Um, and uh, I just want to show you how this is done. All of these uh, cases are, are done through the same sort of function where the only parameter that's going to change is this um, s or spread parameter uh, from the uh, radial basis function. So the suitable kernel that we are going to use uh, for this sort of a separation is the so-called radial basis function, also called sometimes the uh, Gaussian kernel. Um, and uh, so if I'm writing here the RBF uh, kernel or the uh, Gaussian kernel, as it is called sometimes. Um, this is a uh, function that's of the following type k of <coughs> x and y is equal to um, an exponential applied to minus the norm of x minus y squared over 2s squared. And this, as you might remember, we discussed in a previous video about the radial basis function. This s is the so-called spread uh, parameter. This spread parameter should be found by the modeler. And, and the modeler, I mean, can do this by doing several attempts and, and checking which value of s gives us, um, uh, you know, a better separation, a smaller um, uh, indication of, of um, uh, error in terms of misclassification. Um, 
And this can be done in a structured way using a so-called cross-validation. Cross and we will have a separate video uh, later on about cross-validation. One comment I want to make in here is that if you think about the um, uh, Taylor expansion of the Gaussian kernel, uh, so that you, you get a sort of a feeling of what kind of an expansion we are using in here in terms of the original features of our model. So if you think about the Taylor expansion, that's going to give us an infinite sum. So this exponential is expressed as an um, infinite series. And so conceptually speaking, this is a very interesting kernel because it's working over an infinitely dim dimensional space. Um, that encompasses the, all the powers of the original feature set. So conceptually, you can say that this uh, Gaussian kernel gives us access to an infinite amount of features if you think in terms of the original data set. There are a number of useful variants of this that can work uh, well um, depending on your data set. Um, you can also use the so-called exponential kernel. And the exponential kernel has the form k of x, y is equal to, this is an exponential of minus, is the norm of x minus y divided by 2s squared. Um, and so the only thing that, that's different here is that you don't have this power 2 of applied over the norm. Then there is another variant of it, is the so-called Laplacian kernel, and this has the form k of x, y, is equal to, this is an exponential, one more time, <clears throat> and it's minus norm of um, x minus y divided by s. And so if you think about the difference here, you also get the uh, uh, exponent 2 disappearing from the spread. Just one more variant of this uh, Gaussian kernel is the so-called sigmoidal or sigmoid kernel And this is, uh, uh, it, it has the form k of x, y is tan h applied to a times um, x transpose times y plus b, where a and b are parameters that should be found by the modelers through cross-validation. Now, here is a uh, visual presentation of these uh, kernels, uh, just so that you, you have a sort of a feeling for what kind of separation they provide. This is a uh, 3D visualization. Obviously, this, this would be even um, more sophisticated with, with, uh, with more features. But here you have the uh, polynomial kernel, um, and then here you have a feeling of the Gaussian kernel. The Laplacian kernel is over here and this um, uh, sigmoid kernel is, is shown uh, on this graph.